I'm Basso Fibonacci. I'm a painter who lives in Seattle. I live right by these train tracks in the Bemis building, which is a hundred year old building that's filled with mostly artists. Basso Fibonacci is a pseudonym. Basso is an old Zen Buddhist from early Zen days in China, and Fibonacci was a mathematician from Italy. Zen is a very illogical philosophy, and Fibonacci is a mathematician, and math is a very logical thing, so those two parts of me are pretty prevalent in my life, I think. Mostly I doodle when I was younger, but then I got into graffiti when I was around 18 and lived with an artist who kind of showed me what art could be. A lot of my early paintings were based around nature. I'd paint like a lot of animal life. Me and this artist, John Guy painted a wolf that's running south with the city burning behind it. And it's on Soto track, so it's like the bus way where the buses run and the light rail runs. The wolf is the artistic community. Artists are moving south because it's too expensive. I grew up on Tiger Mountain. It's a small community outside of Issaquah. It's very woodsy. There's trees, ferns, animals. Kind of a isolated childhood in some ways. My brother was like living on the streets of downtown Seattle in the 80s. He was addicted to drugs from a very young age and just lived a life of being an addict. And so I grew up knowing that that was a thing and knowing that that could completely destroy someone's life. And eventually he was down in Mexico. I think he was a coyote running drugs and Mexicans across the border. The autopsy said that he was in jail and he went into an alley and overdosed. I remember when my dad got the call that he had died, I remember him just like answering the phone and then, you know, bursting into tears and running up to his room and crying. And my dad did not cry. That was the first time I think I ever heard my dad cry. And so I was like freaking out, called my mom. I'm like, she like said it must be Eric because that's the only thing that she could think that would make him react like that. What happened, I was like drinking and writing graffiti and fell off a bridge and uh, broke my back, lost my arm. I think I was creative before, but I wasn't really focused on art. I skateboarded, so I spent a lot of time skateboarding. And I think not being able to skateboard and like live my life like that, I kind of like found a new outlet for my creativity and got more focused on painting and creating, being expressive. Part of like the stuff I'm doing right now is based around the fentanyl crisis and downtown culture. It's something I see a lot. Like I spend a lot of time downtown and it's something that just has kind of taken over the city. And I mean, part of the reason I know what withdrawals are like is I was on morphine for 10 years after my accident and trying to come off the morphine was extremely hard. And so I kind of have like a small inkling of what withdrawals are like. I know they're a lot worse when you're on heroin or if you're on fentanyl than what I had, but it's even with like, the small amounts, amounts of morphine I was coming off of was really like a struggle. So these are the foils that people have smoked fentanyl off of. You can see the little lines that the blue pills make as they slide across the foil when they're smoking them. Each of these will eventually have a painting on them. I'm painting skulls on the foils because people are dying from the fentanyl. And I'm trying to quantify it. Like people hear numbers, they hear 200 people die downtown this year about, and that doesn't really tell you anything. It's just a number that you hear. When you actually see 200 skulls, you can start to like understand how many people that is to die in like, you know, basically like one neighborhood. I don't really have a point I'm trying to make because I don't know the answer. I'm making art just based on what I see and what I think is interesting. I hope this to create some kind of conversation. There has to be like compassion. You have to like look at these people's point of views and like understand that these people are suffering. They might not have had a nice upbringing, you know. You have to have compassion for people that are living on the street for sure. It's like a rough life, especially going into the winter times. This is like a moment in time and I'm trying to kind of solidify moments in time with my art. 
and I'm just trying to like talk about something in a visual way and hopefully have people have some empathy for these people that live on the streets. People just like want them to go away. People just want them to, a lot of people just want them to die. They want them to be in jail. They don't want them to exist. For the most part, I'd rather hang out with people on the streets. I'd rather have an interesting conversation with them than like drink a beer in a beer hall and play ping pong. You know? Follow Bazo and see more of his work on Instagram. Catch Art Zone Friday nights at 8 and anytime online at seattlechannel.org slash artzone.